welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take a midweek break to cover what makes the games run. And this week is not going to be an exception because Google has removed the Ubuntu torrent from search, raising a very, very good question. Was 12.04 really that bad? Question mark. NKDN Live has rounded corners. Yes, that is a legitimate update. <laughs> Linus Torvald swears. In other shocking news, Sky reportedly still blue. You can claim your GTX 970 class action damages, but only if you live in the U.S. And a uh, Hewlett Packard buys a chameleon. Uh, it's very expensive, but it's also very good. Uh, and Intel and AMD new CPUs won't receive support on old win Windows versions. That should make a few people switch to Linux, maybe. That's some wishful thinking. <laughs> It'll never happen. Anyway, I'm Vince Stone here at um, LWDW Actual in Athens, joined all the way from Portugal. Across Hello, I am Pedro Mateus. You can find me all the way across the pond. And all the way in L.A. where it's... Um, in L.A. It's Mathieu Commodore. Oh, man. He's awesome. Look at him. Gentlemen, let's get right into this. Uh, sweet Susie. HPE. Ooh. HP. So that's Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And mm -hmm. they, had, they acquired a company called Microfocus. And Microfocus, they do one thing that's COBOL development, like they are the makers of uh, visual COBOL, but they have also one very large I just want to thing, stop you right which... there, visual COBOL, just gave <laughs> yes, me that's the, a thing. Like, physical willies, man. I was like, Ooh, oof. Pain. <laughs> uh, but there's, there are also the, um, uh, the, the owners of the SUSE distribu Linux distribution, so they bought this a couple of years ago from Attached Mates, and which they also bought from Novel a couple of year, years back. Uh, so yeah, they, they bought the the whole uh, Microfocus company, and they do get like uh, SUSE as uh, side effects. Uh, so they, they what's why? Would they want to do that? Well, they, they wish to improve their cloud infrastructure. Um, HP already has uh, an OpenStack implementation, but uh, SUS also has a lot of knowledge in this uh, field. So this will allow to merge the, the two together and probably build like some better OpenStack solution. It so definitely that's... could. I mean, this uh, deal was valued at approximately $8.8 billion. Uh, that is going to make uh, Susie HP's preferred Linux partner. And, you know, I was just kind of playing around in the show notes with Strider. I was like, so, so they're going to use um, Open Susie Leap, man? Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Susie has all these um, distributions that are already targeted, like companies that, like HP. So they have a sled, which is the desktop edition. They have various um, distribution uh, on SLES. So that's the server edition. So they have the cloud one. They have like all these servers. Uh, they have storage solutions as well. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you said that what about HP UX? HP UX is still a thing. It still receives updates, but yeah, I don't think that HP UX has got anywhere near uh, Linux. What is Linux today? So it's very nice that HP has this platform now. Well, uh, HP also awesome. had WebOS back in the day. They could use that. <laughs> they could definitely they could. do that. I mean, I think one was thing like... about this article that kind of um, it's like, wow, I'm getting old and forgetful. Because I was like, oh, right, Novell. They, they used to have Susie way back in the day. but They used to be a part of Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, right? Uh, no, I mean, uh, we could see some interesting stuff happen in the next few years, but we will see. Okay. Yeah, we'll be around to see it. So, business as usual around the uh, kernel mailing list because Linus Torvalds. Just uh, according to the Inquirer, sent another expletive-filled rant at uh, who was the recipient this time? Bjorn Anderson? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Bjorn suggested that uh, someone create a unified system to handle both the kernel modules and the firmware necessary for that kernel module to interpret whatever bit of hardware that 
your PC or appliance has. And they wanted to unify that instead of having the firmware just be a software thing that you have sitting on your hard drive, which the kernel module itself just pulls. Because there are some issues every now and again for a few specific cases where that doesn't exactly work. And Linus basically said, that's stupid. That's really effing stupid. (laughs) And he decided to... He actually proposed one of the solutions that Linus proposed was... um, you could load the set the uh, kernel modules to load with a delay. That way, say if you, whenever the system is booting and it was generating the init RAM FS, you could actually load the module for whatever bit of hardware you have laying around to load later after the file systems were mounted. That way, it could access the firmware. And apparently, that's what they're going with, judging by how the uh, that particular thread went. So at this point, reporting that Linus Torvalds cussed someone out of their safe space and destroyed whatever ego they had managed to build up to that point is like reporting that water is wet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I notice is uh, we always see these articles saying, oh, Lin- Linus said some naughty words and <laughs> stuff like this. But they, they don't discuss about whether he was right or wrong about what he said, and usually he's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's not about the content, it's just like, okay, he said some naughty words, funny, haha. <laughs> no, 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 Shreddy, you gotta understand, man, uh, it's violating some people's safe space, like we do every week on um, Linux Gamecast Linux Weekly, week. yeah. where, where people scream when we say naughty words that hurt their fee-fees, and <laughs> yeah. that, that's what they say, They're like, well, did we get anything wrong? Silence. They, they never want to address that. Oh. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, man, all this over adding uh, user space critical mount events, like, uh, oh, I, I don't know. I read that. Uh, it, I, I try to stay out of these mailing lists because for me, it's oh, like, it, it's it's like so Jersey awesome. Shore for nerds. And yeah, just and get you, some popcorn. Do right. yourself a favor and get some popcorn and start reading the mailing and, list. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> that's Linus. Linus is like, it gets to the boiling point and is like, boom, just ask NVIDIA. So. Um, video editing, something I might know a thing or three about on Linux, uh, and KDN Live, something I quit using a long time ago because it spike crashed and killed a huge project I was working on, and I don't forget. A um, couple of new things. We are talking about 1608.1. It is out. Um, interface, rounded corners to the interface. Really want to point that out. A couple of new profiles. They've added 50 frames and 60 frames transcoding profiles. Why that wasn't in there, not quite sure. And as pointed out, a number of bug fixes. Um, Which is good. Yeah, that's There's definitely good. There's a lot good. of I bugs they needed to fix. Really <laughs> want to say that, you know, I haven't played with KDN Live in a long, long time. I know it's gotten a lot better. A lot of people use it, and I know people are furiously typing, like, but you use OpenShot 1.4. It's like, yeah, it works. Um <laughs> It does what I need it to do. It doesn't try to pretend to be anything it's not. I recently Except tried the um, finishing brush. a sentence, but when I got done <laughs> trying to finish that sentence, I tried out Flowblade uh, because they said, oh, they got a new version of that. Open that up, tried it. Needlessly obtuse. Um, I, I don't know. Good on this project. I know a lot of people use it, and I know a lot of people use it with great success. Uh, what were you saying, Pedro? It's just that open shot, at least... From what I hear from you, anyway, uh, it uh, likes to crash a little bit. Maybe not as much as KDE and Live used to, but it still crashes a little bit. No? Oh, absolutely it crashes. <laughs> I, man, no, there's not a video editor on Linux that I can't feed one of our like LGC <laughs> weekly projects to, and it just doesn't spite nope. Um, Pull a mirror on that one. I will trade spite mo- spite noping for usability, though, and actually oh, okay. doing yeah. things and having the options. And trust me, she was like, what about 2.0 open shot? And I was like, that is a stinking pile of you know what. Strider, you know more about video editing than me, so tell no, me. No, I, I, I don't thing. use them a lot, but that's what I like about this new version is that there's a really short list of new features mm-hmm. and a lot, a lot, lot of fixes for crushing crushes and stuff like that and until we get rock solid video editors on linux we don't really need new features i mean we just 
need some stuff that doesn't crash. And when we got to that point, when video editors don't crash, then yeah, we we can bring the, the nicer stuff. So yeah, for people who want to try it on Ubuntu, there is an official PPA. Mm -hmm. um, so there it it should be available on Arch and other distributions. If you're on Debian, uh, you're maybe on your own. You can download the deprecated version. Uh, if you want to try the new stuff, you may have to compile so it yourself. what you're saying is if you're on Debian, you're on Debian. Hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, <Okay. laughs> uh, that is something I guess I should point out because uh, I like trying things, even things that have burnt me in the past. And I was going to try um, KDE and I'm using the 14.04 LTS um, because reasons, unfortunately. I went to install that, and I was like, oh, right, I have to install uh, the KDE Kitchen Sync along with it. Uh, no. Yeah, it relies on the uh, K framework. <laughs> the K everything, yes. So, yeah. yeah I, I wonder why you don't have this installed already. Why would I? Maybe because you are, you're going to pull some nope. some software that will use this. See, I and like I've this. I currently have a working system with none of that installed. Strider's first argument is telling me that I need to install it. Well, if you want to try out KDN Live, and it won't hurt your system. I mean, it won't do anything other than make KDN Live work. Mm -hmm. So it will use a few megabytes of your SSD. But other than that, I mean, it's where's, what's the difference? You tell me, it's your problem. <laughs> I mean, I do it all the time. I, when I install a Linux system, I Remember will kids, install if something. If there's anything that's... that Matthew likes, run from it. So <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about Paramount wiping infringing Ubuntu torrents from Google because movie studios can't help themselves. But the real story here for me is, you know, they, they kind of sent the... um take down requests to the Googs, the Googles, and, well, you know, Google really has this nasty habit of shoot first, um, ask questions later, their policy, and they're like, oh, yeah, so that, that's clearly uh, infringing, so let's remove all the um, search results for that torrent link, uh, and it was uh, for Transformers, Age of Extinction, and listen, man, I know 1204 was not that great of an LTS, but don't, don't insult it by comparing it to Age of Extinction, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, Paramount we're talking about. Uh, Strider, you had a bit of in the notes. Yeah, my only advice the would be uh, please don't download your Linux distribution from like a wireless tracker. You can find very easily uh, the torrents from the official website. If you go to ubuntu.com, they have torrents. Unless... If you Unless you really want your PC to be part of a botnet, it, I mean, the, the, yeah, it could it could be infected with some random stuff. It could yeah, be it the could. official <laughs> one. I mean, you'd have to check the MD5 or something. But I mean, why would you do that? Just go to the official websites, get your official torrents. Uh, I'll tell you exactly why some people will do that because that's how they're used to downloading their Windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's where they find their ISOs. Mm -hmm. But it still boggles my mind to this day how Google, you know, the most valuable company in the world, they've finally overtaken Apple this year, and they still bend over and let the MPA shove whatever phallic device they happen to have laying around right up their arses. Hey man, that's just like Google's policy. They're like, oh, whatever. I mean, they do the same thing with these, you know, using the safe harbor thing with YouTube. Like, well, if we just nuke it from orbit, then we'll deal with it later. You can't come after us, right? And they hide behind that. With this, I, I don't know. The I mean, yeah, this is just a fun story to talk about. It's entertaining. And it kind of shows off, you know, a very heavy-handed broadsword type way of fixing something that, uh, yeah, that's just not the way to do it. But they have nothing on Valve's review system. Tune in Saturday if you want to find out how to really do something automated really wrong. So <laughs> This is Valve, but, uh, well, this isn't Valve. This is actually Unity. This is our sort of gaming-related story of the week. And I saw this pop up on Google+, Plus and I also... At around the same time, I saw a very similar post show up on Twitter. And the hashtag here is nothing to see here. Hmm. Okay, so nothing to see here. So I see, you know, a little 3D render, a screenshot wait, 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 of a 3D it's render. It's they said nothing to see here. Were they running it on an AMD card? 
<laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Just black a screen. Black screen. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> you can actually see a full 3D render and a little bit of a terminal down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at what it says right there, it's like uh, Vulcan? Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Vulcan. Vulcan. Yeah, so... so yeah, so um, Sir Levi Bard, one of the head developers uh, at Unity 3D, is working, currently working on introducing Vulkan, the Vulkan renderer, to Unity. And that's good. No, I, I mean, that's good. absolutely neat, because Unity is definitely <laughs> a tool, and unfortunately it's a tool that's easy enough to use to be used wrong. And <laughs> man, people really like using it incorrectly. I'm kind of horrified by this and excited at the same time, mainly because... Some developers are going to be able to find a way to add Vulcan support to their games probably next year, and it's going to be rubbish, but Strider thinks it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think that uh, at last we will get like good performance on Unity games on AMD CPUs, which was not the case before with OpenGL. Well, do, you, do you honestly expect AMD to, by this time next year, to support Vulcan <laughs> properly on Linux, even though they <laughs> no, invented the mantle technology the it's based on? Do you, do you expect them to do that, really? Oh, Monster Cameron's <laughs> going to have a field day with you, Ben. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was mentioning the CPUs because Vulkan already does run really well with AMD CPUs. Mm. It does take the lead over Intel. In, on Linux? Um, on uh, Maybe on Windows as well, I don't know. Yeah, we don't really have the uh, Windows numbers, but you can always trust the Unity Ghetto to deliver on the shoddy performance front, regardless of whatever graphics API. But, you know, not, not to completely using. shoot on it. Um, and I did say shoot on it. <laughs> uh, we're going to see some awesome things come out of it, because again, to yeah. uh, reiterate, Unity is a tool, and great games have been made with Unity. Yeah. Um, Yes. Usually to us, we, you know, just shock because when we see a really wicked cool game made on Unity, we're like, what? Then we get angry at everyone else using it. It's like, look, these people know how to Unity. See, you can do good uh, stuff with unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, yeah. the great majority of people do not. And unless yeah. the people making the Unity assets actually optimize them, the people who buy those assets in those asset packs and just cobble them together and sell them on Steam as though they were a game, those people can't code, period. So it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Final thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Then, then again, you have games like uh, Distance or Firewatch that are made with Unity. And they, they look great. Ziggurat, and yeah. Yeah, Ziggurat as well. Yeah, Ziggurat was great. the first they're game like, I ever saw that like, pegged all eight physical cores. And I was like, what? And uh, it was running with everything on 11 at 120-something. The, the only reason you checked that with Ziggurat was, was like, why is this? This thing's wicked smooth, man. What's going on? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> all right. That explains that. But, you know, we're all just NVIDIA fanboys. Sorry. Uh, oh, NVIDIA. yeah, yeah we, totally. We, we, so, wait, Monster Cameron, here you go. Wait oh, a minute, right. Wait you a minute. Did. Wait. Uh, <laughs> we we got to do an ad read, Pedro. Yes, no, let's not read any more ads. Uh -huh. I'm still, I still have a sore throat from last Saturday. Okay. Don't want to do it. Mm -mm. Okay, well, uh um, instead of reading ads, let's thank the beautiful people that make this show possible at uh, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We have 90 Patriots kicking in 162 wet, stinky caches per Saturday night train wreck. That's actually our big show, which funds this show. And, um,. Who was it? Adam Curry had a really good analogy about it. When you think of it, it's like, what is Patreon? It's definitely just a way to keep us loud, live, and independent, so we don't have to take these ads. You're like, wait, are they really saying what they think? Yes, trust. We are. But, you know, it's kind of like having that cool little shop downtown that you like going into once or twice a month because they got a bunch of cool, wicked stuff, and you're like, all right, that's cool, and one week, you you know, you don't ever really buy anything, and they're closed. Well, this is a good way to keep that shop from getting closed. Love that analogy. It's brilliant. Get over there. Check it out. Um, did we uh, put up some new stuff? We got a new Trying yes. Again series coming out. <laughs> We're uh, coming close to the Trying Again series finale. Oh, man. Finally. Oh. Finally. It's <laughs> and so, yeah, you can find the uh, the latest episodes already up and at it. Uh, it's like, it's, it's a teeny tiny. And we got it's Pedro a teeny, tiny live stream. Um, yeah, there was that too. <laughs> but yeah, you can 
find like new episodes of trying again and left for brad too with uh sometimes strider sometimes empty sometimes whomever else find the strider episodes be. they're the best <laughs> they're, uh, trust whomever me it doesn't feel it. like it when we're recording them but when you go back and watch them they're hilarious okay that's enough shilling now let's uh poo poo yep. on nvidia yes let's because i was one of those idiots who bought a gtx 970 Mm-hmm. I spent 400 euros on an Asus GTX 970 Strix. And I was, hey, okay, all right. So I only have 1080p monitors and the performance is okay, I guess. Uh, but a couple of months later, there was a little snafu that turned out it only had like three and a half gigs that you could access at the full PCIe bandwidth, which is around 16 gigabytes per second. And the last 500 megs, you could only access it at around one gigabyte per second. So you basically had 500 megs of, well, very, very slow memory, like SSD slow, almost. So NVIDIA got themselves in a bit of hot water because they always, with every single bit of advertisement they released for the 970, they claimed it was a four gigabyte VRAM card, when it technically was not. So... They got themselves in a uh, class action lawsuit and they decided to settle before it ever got to court. That right there. Well, yeah, true. But I mean, you know, you can only get what is like 35 what stinky cash is yeah, back for that's... this. But uh, that's only if you're in Freedomsville, USA, because NVIDIA kind of looked over at uh, Europe and said peace among worlds, right? Yeah, basically. Uh, and so if you live in the US, you can go to gtx970settlement.com. That's a pretty good URL. Good on you, whomever set that up. Uh, and you can fill out the form. The, you'll be asked for the, uh, if you already have a claim number, if you were one of the original signers of the um, class action lawsuit, mm-hmm. you can enter your claim number. Or if you don't, you can still enter like your um, VBIOS identifier what have what have you so you can read it it's it'll give you a little tutorial on how to find exactly what you need and they will pay you 35 wet stinky caches or if you can't claim ownership uh of the video card i think you're still eligible for nine bucks there's something else you need to provide at the time but yeah it's just for the us and this is the probably one of the best selling video cards of all time and those lawyers seem to be a little too scared of money to make this a worldwide suit. I don't know. Her- it- Hercules graphics would probably like a word with you. Strider, why do you have so much <laughs> money that you don't even care about this? <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I have the, the 970 and I could uh, claim the this stuff. But I mean, I'm just too lazy to, to do it. And if someone wants to do it for me, then I will just... <laughs> Give them the <laughs> the thirty five bucks that will result. I mean, Patrick will be will be giving me a uh, Raspberry Pi too. So if he wants uh, the money from the nine seventy, then hey, you can have it if you want. <laughs> All right, yeah, no. but, uh, that's the big, a good way to think. What really? The, the biggest thing here is that just making this U.S. only is literally like a slap on the wrist of Nvidia when they deserve a full on. Sp- you know, the spanking paddles, spanking with a well, paddle. You, you never know. They, they might actually enjoy that. What is <laughs> up with this? Because it, it's Windows 10. Why, why are we talking about Windows 10? Okay, so we're talking about the new upcoming CPUs uh, from uh, Intel and AMD. So it's uh, ba- Baby Kale, no, KB Lake, and Zen from AMD. Um, so what's what's the deal with that is that they all will all will only be optimized for Windows 10. Um, it will probably work like on every version of Windows, but some features may only work on Windows 10, and I kind of understand this because it will it would require Microsoft to go back and send patches. Uh, for Windows 7, for Windows 8, to make the the new CPU features work uh, on those older systems. Well, yeah, definitely you're going to have to throw some kernel hooks back in the old sauce, but the two big things they're looking at being affected, primarily Turbo Boost and Speed Shift. Um, okay, we're not talking about, you know, oh, it's useless now, I can't use that. 
And you know, not going back and doing that for Windows 8 is, uh, yeah, kind of a bird culture type move, if you ask me. And it's their fault because they're like, but Windows 7 is seven years old. And I was like, yeah, and people wouldn't still be using it if Windows 8 wasn't a steaming pile of nope. But uh, what it's just like, I, I don't know. I, it, it shocks me when I see this because closed sourced operating systems are just like so 1990s. I was like, wow, this is a thing people live with. And the NSA really, I mean, Microsoft really wants you on Windows 10, Pedro. Uh -huh. yeah. But I like how Microsoft is actually telling people in advance this time. Because last time with Skylake, they only told people right in the middle of it mm -hmm. and said, no, oh, yeah, no, we're not going to support Skylake. Skylake had been out for like a month or two. Oh, yeah, we're not going to support Skylake in Windows 7 or Windows 8. They had to backtrack like immediately on that decision because there was an uproar. <laughs> well, <laughs> an you uproar know, you're definitely going to have your um, win bros that are just like, well, I'm just going to switch to Linux. Like, no, you're not. Shut up. Uh, I, I, yeah. But is it something about like closed source operating systems or something about sending updates to a seven-year-old uh, OS? Uh, the correct answer because... to that is yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, okay. Uh, one, one last thing to notice is Intel, when you draw graphs and benchmarks and stuff like this, don't choose slightly different shades of yellow to, to draw the lines because, uh, I mean, I, don't, I can't read that. You can't? It's, it's, it's clear as day, man. Yeah. You need oh, let's see. The top one is a faded Stratus yellow. Right when I come green, over there, I will brown. color calibrate okay. that monitor because if you can't see the difference between <laughs> bright. I mean, on that monitor, I can. On the other one, it's harder to read. Oh, okay. But right. still. Oh, TN panels. If there was one person on the show that would have an issue with the design characteristics of something over the actual technical, then it was like, yep, nailed that one. Oh, what? <laughs> what? What? Nope, this is this is a thing. Adblock Plus, man. They, they've um, incoherence. Hang on, no, no, guys. I was gonna take a minute here. <laughs> See if I can wrap <laughs> my brain around this. This is right. Adblock Plus launches adverti advertising platform. Okay, don't, don't don't they block ads? What? That was what they did originally. Yes. Then came the acceptable ads policy, okay. and now they're actually selling ads if you allow for the acceptable ads. Well, the big story, like the legitimate story to come out of this is now not, not you know, they were whitelisting ads for Google and, you know, other select partners are like and making, you know, some serious change. They said the opt out rate for that is something a little like nine to 11 percent, which is like, what? Uh you know, a lot of people just kept the whitelisting feature on, but now they're going to set it up so publishers can, you know, just take part. You know, if you want to sign up and you publish stuff, uh, you, you can get a little taste, a little cut of that for their new ad thingy. And I think they said they're only going to be taking, you know, like 6%, you know, small cut, and basically you're going to get everything else. Uh, Pedro, why is this going to destroy the internet? <laughs> Because at what point does uh, Adblock Plus, who is now in the uh, hands of corporations, uh, the original they bought it from the original developer a couple of months ago, and okay, so they're serving ads now instead of just blocking them like they used to, and that's what people used it for. Now they're serving ads. At what point does the acceptable ads policy start to include everyone who gives us enough money? <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, when you block ads well, like uh, Adblock Plus does, uh, you get in a position of power because you can control all the ad publishers and you just have to say, okay, you give us money and we'll, we'll accept them, we, we'll make them acceptable. So it's basically, yeah, okay, we'll take your money and <laughs> it's just, I would have thought that acceptable would have meant, uh, you know, like, not ads for uh, Rolex or not ads for like, well, fake Rolexes or not Punch ads the for monkey. Hot, <laughs> hot singles, hot singles in your, your area or some, some stuff like that. Or, mm, that we do super... miss those Christian mingles on <laughs> LinuxGamePass.com. <laughs> no, but one thing it reminds me of is I think it's just like the the way the Brave browser works. You know, they, they have these uh, these block ads, but they put uh, other ads on top of they these. They put their own ads uh, on top. Yeah, of I mean, yeah. it's basically the same thing. 
moral of the story, kids, use yeah. uBlock Origin. I don't know. I mean, this yeah, is a, that's what I a bit different because, you know, as a publisher, let's say um, on Linux Gamecast, that's where this show's hosted mm-hmm. along with um, something called Linux Gamecast. It's amazing. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we could sign up and be like, okay, and they would let, you know, advertisements through until you know one slipped through and it made a noise and somebody was looking at it then they will go scorched earth policy on adblock plus they're like what you know it'll be a very jarring experience this is a very dangerous game that they're playing and um you know Rohit pointed out in um chat realm yeah you block uh which is definitely a thing. It definitely works. Um, I, I like using um, my favorite program called host.deny. You should uh, check that out. It works pretty <laughs> Yeah, good. just edit your host files and add anything with the word add in there. Just <laughs> gone. <laughs> okay, so All right. um, let's talk about your... Exp- oh, my, hang on. See, see, Pedro is like a uh, hipster when it comes to exploding devices. Oh, yeah, totally. I preempt the explosiveness mostly because my hand's already gone whatever (laughs) but yeah no the there's a new ota update for the shield tablet like the one i happen to have right here and the shield tablet k1 which is basically the exact same thing except it was about a hundred bucks cheaper and it didn't come with the ac adapter micro usb cable or really anything else for that matter so they the new update brings the new um well, the July 1st, 2016 update to Android 6.0 and uh, conformity with OpenGL ES 3.2. That's better Vulkan all the way around. That's always good. They have some optimizations for Android Doze. That's uh, not a Windows joke, I think. And th- the one issue that really struck out at me was a um, fixed issue with intermittent auto-rotation shutdowns. I had noticed that when I had the uh, stock ROM installed, every now and again, it would just shut down. And then I tried to unlock it and it wouldn't do anything. So I'd hold down the button and it would start back up. It's like, what's causing that? But it wasn't common enough that it annoyed me. Mm-hmm. But apparently it was the uh, auto rotation. Say if I locked it, put it down on the table and the screen changed orientations when I set it down horizontally, it would shut it down. So the, so the important takeaway from what you just said is um, Portugal has yet to discover how to make level uh, tables. <laughs> Look, when you put it down, you don't put it down always horizontally. You just kind of put it on an angle. I, too, like to live dangerously. Um, <laughs> Android 6.0 security, so it is running the marshmallows, correct? That's a good thing. Yes. Um, you know, you, you got a good point. We were talking before the show really started. Because there was like a massive critical update supposed to be coming out in the September patch. Um, or uh, when. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people are just like, are never going to get it. Um, I'm running the nightly, so with a Cyanogen mod, but. You know. Yeah, you're, you'll probably get it earlier. Uh, for those of you out there still running the um, stock shields. You're not going to be safe against that, nor are you getting nougat just yet. So we're waiting on that. And to be fair, I mean, your shield should definitely be able to run nougat. I'm yeah, I'm kind of skeptical. My Nexus Ten is still gonna. I mean, it'll probably run it, but I, I don't think it will be pretty. <laughs> but um, tell me why Emacs is the best. Um, Holy wars. <laughs> No, so I'm not a member of the Church of Emacs. I prefer... Excuse uh, excuse me, it's GNU Emacs? Yeah, GNU Emacs. So I prefer VI, 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 the editor of the beast. Mm-hmm. And it's just uh, so a new release in Vim 8. So we don't talk oh, about... That v- breakneck v- release cycle every 10 years. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, the, the last major version of uh, Vim was released like basically 10 years ago. So it's been a while. And now we we have Vim 8, which has a bunch of new features. Yes, and the which... most uh, requested feature, baby. <laughs> now that yeah, Ash and actually one of works the, in Windows. The, the most surprising feature for me was the support of DirectX for Windows. So, you know, to, to get nice fonts. I wonder if it's <laughs> DirectX 12? I don't know. I haven't tried. Uh, the, the nice things about this uh, release is the, the support of async 
uh, I/O and background jobs. So if you got some plugins that do like really resource intensive things, it will make things much faster. And like some plugins I use will be able to change our architecture in a way that will be it will be much more responsive. So I I'm not switching right now. Well, I will. Uh, test it, mm -hmm. but I do use a bunch of plugins. I want I want to make sure that um, they all work with uh, Vim eight. But yeah, that's it's the, the software I use. I spend my, most of my days in Vim. That's the software I use the most. So yeah, I'm quite happy to see a new release. Cool, man. So you're definitely going to try out eight point oh until you find one little tiny thing that's kind of a little bit off. Then you're just going to like throw and burn it and be like, oh, it's like horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I if I got a plugin that's not working, that mm. I I will be switching back to seven seven point four. So Pedro, are you still awake? Yes, yes, I am. Well, how about we uh, start a new segment? Because uh, judging from what I see in the notes, there. No, not really a new segment. We're just giving a name to it because you know <laughs> Raspberry Pis are so cool, and I like playing with them, and they're neat. And I think we definitely need to uh, like have an official name for each week's slice of pie. Because this week, um, oh. from Portable.me, it's going to be in the show notes along with everything else. Check that business out. We're talking about a talky pie, man. It's kind of weird. Strider hates it out of the box, right? <laughs> <clears throat> but, I mean, it's, I mean, this guy slapped it together for his kids. I mean, it's using Mumble for the voice communication. Um, you know, it's lightweight. It's got a small little range. Um, and it's just using the regular pie. Not a very big build. I mean, the 3D case is kind of neat to throw on it. We can look at a picture of it right there. It's kind of breadboarded, put together. Uh, Strider, come on, man. It's cool. It's just neat. It's cool. It's cool, uh, but it really it needs to have a USB power source. And it's you have to be connected to, to a Wi-Fi network. So it does put some big quotes around walkie, the, the walkie part of the walkie-talkie. Mm -hmm. uh, if it had a battery, like uh, there, there are some batteries you can use for the, the Pi, uh, and if it used um, like a 3G module, then that would be really uh, a walkie-talkie. You could like bring it a anywhere and do the same thing. And yeah, I kind that. of agree with Strider on that one. As it stands, it's more of a uh, intercom with a pie more than a walkie-talkie? You see, ladies and gentlemen, that whooshing noise is the concept and purpose of projects like this. Going over <laughs> the head of my co-host combined at Mach 5. Instead of buying them, you know, actual walkie-talkies, because what are they going to do? Go to one room of the house to the next, because why? They're kids. They're not going to be 16 clicks apart, you know, little Timmy and little Susie. No, instead of just buying them, you know, those nine quid walkies that you might find. No, get them a kit. Teach them a little about soldering, pin outs. Get yeah, them yeah. some education. But Strider and Pedro would rather have your children not know these things. No, Explain the yourself. biggest issue here is the naming. Mm. It's not the. It's actually kind of awesome, and it is. Oh, most okay. of the you got a problem with the naming are. of this, but the sport cricket makes perfect sense, right? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't like cricket. Hell, I don't like sports in general. But no, the, the, it's just a. This isn't walkie-talkie, man. It's an intercom. That's cool. It's, it's an intercom. Get, it, it, it is a Raspberry Pi that talks. <laughs> Tell me that is not doing what it says. No, that the, 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 the name is okay. And when he describes it, he puts co quotes around the walkie uh -huh. uh, name, so he knows that it's not a walkie-talkie. So the name is okay. Call it a talkie pi. Com. Talkie Pie is a perfect name because it's talky and it's a uh, built over another Raspberry Pi. So, okay. Good. All right. Uh, Send your hate mail to Pedro at LinuxGameCast.com. Speaking of hate mail, uh, how about they just send us some contact information and maybe we can scream back at them? Yeah. You could always do that by going to LinuxGameCast.com. Hit the contact button. Ven is struggling to find on the nav bar there. Fill out the form. It's pretty easy. If you don't want to go to our website and fill out the form and prove you're smarter than whatever CAPTCHA happens to be thrown at you that day, you can go to, say, Patreon, and you can leave us a comment there. Or you can go to YouTube, find a video, leave us a comment there too. Track down the original post that you saw on some social network like Google+, Twitter, Facebook. 
can leave us a comment there and chances are we will see it. And if it's something we need to address, we totally will. All but right. we actually got some uh, a bit of feedback this just, week. Just a little bit this uh, week. Uh, kind of thick last week. Uh, I was talking about yeah. mouse. Uh, David C. So, you know, he has a question for Pedro. And it, this is a very, very serious question for the times. Um, I, I think one of the <laughs> like uh, most serious questions we've ever had to address here on uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. So what did he write? Let me tell Possibly. you. So, Pedro Mateus. Are you running Fedora 23 with X? God, no, I almost said it right. Sorry. Um, <laughs> FXCE. Um, t- what do you know that we don't, Pedro? Come on, fess up, man. What, what's up? I, I haven't even heard about it. What, was what type of secret, running Fedora what type of 23. Moon Windows Manager are you running? Are you, are you under NDA? <laughs> I was, uh, uh, well, three months ago, I was running Fedora 23 with LXD. Now I'm running Ubuntu Mate with Mate. Okay, that wasn't the question. Mm-hmm. He didn't say running. He said, he said ruining. <laughs> I, mean, oh, I, mean, I, I know that's ruining. Right. Okay. No, yes. the font was throwing me off there. Yeah. No. Uh, I, no, I'm not. Not anymore. Now I'm ruining Ubuntu Mate. Hmm. Okay. So uh, anyone knows where I can download the FXCE? Because that sounds good. Yeah, man, you just go to xfce.horse uh, and uh, <laughs> take you right to it. Hey, man. FXCE dash dyslexia? I, I, I don't know. The, I, I use uh, XFCE. I, I love it. I, I've always used it because, you know, I use my Linux desktop to work, to do the work. I don't like whiz bang. And I was like, look, it's flashy. I was like, no, look, it's functional. It does stuff. Uh, Strider hates it, though, man. Are you implying that I don't work on my GNOME shell or Unity? I have nightmares every time you post a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that mess. I, I do have a pink and orange uh, wallpaper now. It's just like, <laughs> just layered. It's like, <laughs> 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 clean, empty, you know, and no. Anyway. Moving on. Rene, he would like to address some reach. Yeah, yeah. Outreachy is this, a uh, gnome out hang reach. Hang on, we just want to give a little content here. Uh, context even. Uh, this is from episode uh, Bappy Skinny Linux. Oh, yeah. It's the one you did with uh, Jordan. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because neither me nor Strider were around. Uh, and Outreachy is a gnome outreach project for minorities and technology like women, Latinos, and other such groups. To get more contributors to open source projects. Uh, I'm so scared of addressing this one. <laughs> Come on, you speak on behalf of all Latinos. <laughs> <laughs> well, European Latinos anyway. Except for the Spanish. They don't seem to like the Portuguese very much. It's okay, we don't like them either. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's always a good idea to try and get those segments of the population that are not or often don't feel as comfortable contributing to big projects because they feel or they sometimes it's not they they don't know whether or not they will be segregated or really uh, well have anything leveraged at them based on their gender or their place of birth or the color of their skin as the case may be and in a way i kind of see that and i think it's amazing we need everyone to contribute to just about every single project that they know they like to use and they have some ideas to improve we want everyone regardless of any of those things to contribute to those projects but at the same time you're creating a outreach program specifically targeted at those people's in a way that is still a way of segregation um uh, opinions expressed by uh, pedro Montes. yeah no no, no no this is my opinion <laughs> and mine alone <laughs> i don't know man here's the way i definitely look at it uh is linux i've never thought about it like in any way it's ever been expressed other than uh you're sitting around you're, you're stuck with windows or whatever you're like this is boring is there anything better than this? Then you go off on your own adventure. This also applies to hardware hacking and anything like that. I mean, I think it transcends, uh, you know, race, religion, culture, or anything like that. And if you don't believe me, show up on Saturday night 
for yeah. <laughs> Linux Cast <laughs> Weekly. And look at Chances the are we're going to offend vast you cornucopia of people that we have there from all walks <laughs> of life. It's definitely a thing. Strider, um, what, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I, I like the project. I think oh, it's a great is, project. It's just a great yeah. project. I prefer if we didn't need it. Uh, maybe, uh, we probably do need it. I'd prefer if we didn't, if we were already in a, in a well, state Well, I think it is where... a good thing to like bring this into places where, you know, just like culturally or whatever just might not be a thing and introduce and be like, oh, that's neat. And yeah. get people interested in something you might not mm -hmm. not just not known about, right? No, it's a great thing. I mean, it's, I'm happy that it exists. I think that there was some drama a couple of months ago because they they kind of like it was one of the most popular GNOME projects, and some people they they said, oh, this is like making the rest of GNOME less good or something like this. I mean, that didn't make any sense. Oh, uh, no, someone with a really is, big ego. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's good. I mean, good for them. Uh, I, I'm happy that this exists. Cool. Check it out. Um, Gnome.org forward slash outreachy. But, 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 that is going to do it for this week's Linux weekly, daily, Wednesdays, which we totally should start doing on Tuesdays just to put a cherry <laughs> on it. I've been Vin Stone. I have been Peter Mateos. And I have been Magic Commodore. We'll see you next week, and Pedro and I will see you Saturday. Prepare. Indeed. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you.